Hello and welcome to the Vulgar Eclectic. A little while ago I finished recording a video about some comic books I've picked up over the last few months. I wanted to include some books that I picked up too, but that video got too long, so I thought I'd do a separate one now. For some time I haven't been frequenting used bookstores nearly as much as I usually do. Uh, I haven't been reading physical books for some time either because of a disability that I have. It's been much easier for me to read on a laptop instead. But I, I love physical books, and that's my preferred method of reading, although I'm very, very grateful I have a way to continue to read books while I'm dealing with this physical problem. But I did get to a used bookstore a couple of times recently, and it was so much fun to be in a used bookstore and browse the aisles and look at all the used books. Just that whole, the whole setting is so wonderful. I, I like probably everyone on BookTube. I love used bookstores. And I've, I've been to some really wonderful ones in my life. I even was lucky enough to be able to go to what some people refer to as the used book capital of the world. It's a small little town called Hayon Wai. It's a town in Wales, a small, small place, less than 2,000 people. It's quite close to the border with England. And in a town that small, it, it, it's remarkable how many used bookstores there are. There were probably close to two dozen when I was there, perhaps more. It was an absolute blast to wander through that town and wander through the used bookstores for multiple days. I, I Oh, it was so much fun. I found some really neat books that I brought back with me, some, some of which I think I mailed home so I didn't have to carry so much. Anyway, again, like all of us probably, we can just spend hours in used bookstores and there's no telling what one might encounter in, in such a place. So it was really fun to be back in that environment. So some of these books I got there, some of them I've ordered, but it's just a handful. So I'll go ahead and just start with, with showing them. This one is one that I ordered. It's a collection of artwork by Correggio. I was reading something, and I can't remember, I think it was an essay. Oh, yeah, I think it was an essay by William Hazlitt about painting. And in that essay, he mentioned some of his favorite writers from the Renaissance. I mean painters. He mentioned some of his favorite painters from the Italian Renaissance. And I realized that I would really like to be more familiar with some of the artwork that came out of that period. So I looked online, tried to find some affordable collections that had nice reproductions of the work of some of the work and this this is what I came across and I thought it fit the bill really well I'll just flip through for a few moments here So pretty neat stuff. And it's got some nice biographical information as well as a multitude of reproductions. So that's that's been pretty neat to be looking through. At the used bookstore I went to, I found that beauty. <laughs> Very cool. Some of Milton's shorter poems. I've never read Paradise Lost, although it's on my mental to-be-read list. I have read some of his shorter poems. This has, uh, let's see, this collection has four poems. L'Allegro, Il Pensaroso, Comus, and Lycidas, none of which I've read. So I'm looking forward to reading these. It's got a biographical sketch of Milton. It looks like this book was uh, 1919. It has notes about the poems in the back, which I enjoy, that kind of thing in a book. Whoever owned it or one of the people who has owned this in the past took notes, made some 
marginalia here and there in it. That'll be fun to see what they thought about some of these poems. So that's a that's going to be a fun book. I also, let's see, I ordered this book, The Romance of the Book, edited by Marshall Brooks. And this book is a collection of short pieces about books, about the joy of reading, about the love of books, some of which I've already read uh, in other places, you know, some of these pieces I've read in other places, some of them I haven't. I came across this book in the digital version of Wandering the Isles. Basically, I found it on the Internet Archive. Um, I can't remember how. I think I was looking for another book, and this one somehow came up in it. Or did I read? Yeah, I think that's what happened. And uh thought it looked interesting and found an inexpensive copy, so I, I ordered it. It's got stuff from... Let's see, Faith Baldwin, Max Beerbaum, Thomas Carter, Colette, Thomas Cooper, Bill Costley, Frederick Douglass, George Eliot, Benjamin Franklin, Marjor- uh, Margaret Fuller, George Gissing, Edmund Gose, who I, I read his a memoir about him and his father, a very, very good book. Stephanie Green, William Hazlitt, Stuart, Stuart H. Holbrook, Lee Hunt, Gustav Yannick, Walter Gerald, Charles Lamb, Malcolm X, and Alex Haley, Jim McGinn, Henry Miller, Jan Morris, Samuel Pepys, Petrarch, Edgar Allan Poe, Thoreau, Gordon Wilson. So a lot of a lot of neat ones. I think that'll be good. I like that kind of stuff. I've read uh, more than one account, I guess, of of people's love of books, and I usually find that very entertaining and also very useful because it can lead one to many other books. Okay, at the same time I got that Milton collection, I picked this up, a book of poems by Lorca. It has both the original Spanish and the translated English. So poems by Federico Garcia Lorca, edited and translated by Stanley Applebaum. Um, I have another collection, or I have a collection of his poetry called Gypsy Ballads. It is so wonderful. I got that at a used bookstore years ago up in uh, Laramie, Wyoming. And it has such a, such an intense cover, such a mm, stark, beautiful cover. I'll find a picture of it. I don't. It's in storage right now, but I'll find a picture of it and insert it here because it's so neat. And that's the only collection I have of Lorca's poetry, so I was really happy to find this one and really happy that it's a dual language one because I think that is so neat to be able to see them side by side like that so you can get a feel for the original language one and you can also see some of the ways in which the translator has decided to work with language creatively in the translation plus if you want to learn whatever language it was originally written in that can be a very useful way so yes that's a great one great find and then i and then I mentioned actually in the Easter tag that I did that one of the poems, one of the poems, one of the books that I was hoping to pick up or get was the poems, prose, and plays of Pushkin. And I did, I did order. A, I found a really well. I got it for a dollar, and it's in great shape. Uh, the you know the dust cover is pretty worn, but it's an old book, older book. I guess it was published in sixty, yeah, nineteen sixty four. Copyright 1936. Looks like this one came out in 64. It's translated by, I'm I'm probably going to mess this up, Avram, Avram Yarmolinsky. That person, I have have a collection of, uh, what is that called? Can't, there's an edition, the portable, yeah, the portable editions. Anyway, I have a a, a collection of work by Chekhov that is also edited and and, uh, put together by Yarmolinsky, and it's great. Actually, I don't think he he translated those. He he. Uh, well, some of them he did. Yes, some of them he did translate, and some of them were by old what's her name. Uh, can't say it right now. She's a great translator of Russian works. Constance Garnett. And this book I've read quite a bit from online. I um, I've read well. I've read Eugene Onegin. That's fantastic. I've read Boris Godunov, a, a play. And I've read actually probably most or much, I would say much of the short poetry in here. 
But there's also a number of narrative poems that I haven't read in here. There's some short stories in here I haven't read. Just really, really excited about that book. It's a great book to have, I feel like, in in person because it's such it's the kind of book you can just sit down and pick up and dip into whenever. You can always read you know some segment of it you can always reread it the poetry is wonderful to reread of course it's just it's the kind of book where you want to have a wood-burning stove a cup of coffee I think this is what I mentioned in my Easter tag and a cup of coffee and just flip through it and peruse it at your leisure so very glad to have that and that's actually I think the extent of the new books but I do have this one is also I picked up at a used bookstore, but same used bookstore, but it's been, it was a little bit longer ago, but still it's, I guess it's fairly new to me. As I crossed a bridge of dreams by a person who was, I guess, posthumously known as Lady Sarah Sheena. It's not her real name or what she went by. Uh, she's an anonymous, no, no one really knows for sure who she is. She's only identified as the daughter of someone. And I don't remember the name now, but it's a, uh, very, it's a memoir. Uh, it's it's written very in a very journal like fashion. And this this woman, let's see when when did she live? I think about a yeah, she was born in A.D. ten o eight. Wow. And anyway, she she kept this, like I say, journal like chronicle. And she was a book lover. It's that was one of the really neat things in it. She's definitely a book lover. In fact, sometimes she seems to be more in the world of books or the world of the mind. I should, it's probably a better way to say it than in the world. Yeah, it was a very good read. So I highly recommend that if it sounds interesting to you. And then this is a book that is not new at all to me. I mean, I've had it for a long time, but it somehow came out of storage. Oh yeah, I, I, got, I think I got two boxes out of storage recently to start trying to go through some of them. And this one happened to be stuck in it, even though it wasn't a box of books. The Outline of History, H.G. Wells, Volume 2. I have the other volume as well somewhere else, but what a neat spine, huh? Yeah, it's a really, really cool collection of, oh, I shouldn't say, it's a really cool volume of history. It was a very ambitious work H.G. Wells wanted to put together a history that would be accessible to the average person because he knew that I read this somewhere he felt that it was common for people to want to have some grasp of an overview of history of the, the whole world the whole globe and its past and how, how difficult that is for people to get a handle on even people who have gone through higher education so he, he put this together just to have in people's homes so that the average person could have a, a pretty decent understanding of where we've come from. And I think he did a remarkable job with it. I haven't read it in its entirety. I have read more of a short history of, yeah, I think it's called A Short History of the World, which is more or less, an, 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 I suppose, a highly abridged version of this, although I think he rewrote a lot of it too. Yes, another good book to just have on the shelf, uh, like the Pushkin book, because it's a great one to just pick up and read a segment from if you're interested in some aspect or a certain era of history. Of course, this was written a long time ago, so there have been some changes in our knowledge. Well, let's see, this was, when was this published originally? 1920, it looks like. This, this edition, 1956. We have access to more archaeological records since this was written in other forms of history as well. Nevertheless, it's a wonderful compendium of history and a great place for anyone to start, I feel like. And I guess that about wraps it up. A lot shorter than the comic video. Or, well, maybe you saw something interesting in those books that you might want to read, or maybe you have read some of these and want to share your thoughts on it. Please do so down below. In the last video, the comic video, I mentioned some words of wisdom from my father. I'll add another one here. He told me, don't take any wooden nickels. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, thanks very much for listening. Have a great day.
and happy reading.